Let me remove this so that at least you can see the toilet in its face. It's a great opportunity to be here with you this morning. And I know you are not here by mistake. Nana, God bless you. You haven't seen it yet. Yes, Give thanks to God, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell the story. Let those who have been redeemed from the enemy glorify the Lord. The enemy is not the one who is sitting by you. It's the one whose name is called Lucifer, Satan. God has redeemed us, me, from this wicked arm robber, thief, a destroyer, a killer. That's what God has done for me. And if it had not been the Lord, I wouldn't have been here to tell this story. So today I'm here to share my story with you. And I believe that as you listen to the end, you will never leave this place this year. Look at me. I couldn't speak when I was born. It would take five minutes to, for me to say I'm fine if you ask me how how five minutes. And I'll be slapping my tie. And then you ask the question before very embarrassed. You say, it's okay, you are fine, you are fine. I won't accept it until I have said it myself. <laughs> and so by the time I finish it, I'm fine. No questions again. The conversation ends. And so for me to stand here before the Majesty and all these people to tell the story, it will be a joke. You'll be laughing. But when I met this man, they called Jesus Christ. And I gave my life to him. And they prayed for me as we are going to do the same today. They asked me, have you eaten? I said, yes, I've eaten. What did you eat? And from there up to now, I can speak. If this is not the Lord. <laughs> Brethren, I'm the number 12 of my father's 14 children. So you can understand why I have six of them. Three men and three women. Balanced. My father was a Christian at the time. And he was a building contractor. I didn't know anything about God. But because of the experience that he had gone through, he didn't want me to suffer. But he didn't know how to communicate why I should get in touch with Jesus. So he forced us to go to church. So he said, during our time, I'm 66, I think this is the seven now. During our time, a dress or uniform or a cloth will be given to you once a year. Egg, we divide it into four, then my title to one quarter. So my father said, if you don't go to church, I won't buy you clothes. So I decided, well, I will go to church so that at least I can get my, my, my share. So I went to church, not because I, know, I, I, I want to accept Christ. I want to follow God. But for me, for, for my interest, unfortunately today a lot of people go to church because of their personal interest. So my father sat me in the church where he can see me from the platform. I didn't hear any all that I saw sitting at me like this. Go, come forward, come forward. So I came forward and they told me certain things to do. I did without my heart. So I went home, they baptized me. And they say I was a member of the Church of Pentecost. So that's how I became a member of the Church from the day <laughs> Then I met a white man who was a pastor of a denomination. I don't want to mention the name of the church because it's not necessary. And he told me, he's a white man, he said, God's hand is upon you, but you have to get the complete Bible. And I said, oh, I have the complete Bible. Uh, the complete Bible. He said, no, you don't have it. He said, how can you say that? I have both the New Testament and the Old Testament. He said, no, you don't have it. You see, the most important portions of the Bible have been hidden away from the blacks. 
and that Moses wrote ten books. Only five were written the book of the blast, the Bible of the blast. But the remaining five, they are the powerful ones. So I will introduce you to the sixth and seventh book of Moses. And when you get it, you have power. And don't forget a white man telling me this and a pastor telling me this. So I took it as a gospel. Bible says that I, have, I didn't know anything about God. I, I have not accepted, I have not been studying the Bible. You see, when you read 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, the Bible says, The study to show yourself approved unto God. The word mother needed not to be ashamed, but rightly divided the word of God. I have not studied the word. I didn't know. So Hosea said that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. So today, a lot of people are perishing because of what false prophets tell them. And because of that, there are people who don't want to go to church at all. But the fact is, they are counterfeit and they are genuine money. Today we have counterfeit CD, counterfeit dollar. So you cannot say because there's counterfeit, you will not use the CD. It's impossible. You only need to ask God to open your eyes, study the word of God, and you will know the truth. Because the Bible says, by their fruits, you shall know them. I didn't know all these things. So to cut long story short, I found myself practicing spiritism. What is spiritism? We use the sister seven book of Moses, which they say is part of the Bible. Listen, he asked me to import this book from India. And when the book arrived, the first page, is there the book here I can? The first page, when you open the first page of the book, sister seven book of Moses, it is written there in red, red ink. And in capitals, he says that whosoever uses this book does so at his or her own risk. <laughs> and meanwhile, this is what the pastor and the white man told me that is part of the Bible. I'm not here to uh, worry with long stories, but listen, I want to mention a few of the things that I used the book to do. I was using this book to charm beautiful ladies. Let this please forgive me. I have prayed and asked God to forgive me. But I didn't know. I thought I was doing the right thing. Beautiful ladies for seven. Excuse me. Only men. But who had money? But the ladies want the money. But they also want nice personality. And these guys have the money. They didn't have the personality. So I have to choose them. I have to make sure that I charm them for them to follow these other men. So, we had many ways of doing that. I went to the market, about six inches nail, six inches nail, very long, with a hammer, for that water, candy, green, red, red, yellow. We went to the bush, we looked for a tree called Yamibia, and I mentioned the name of this girl, Ya Abia. From today, whatever this man tells you to do, don't object. And I will mention, I will hammer the nail, the nail, a little bit. I will repeat the same thing, I hammer it the second time, then the third time with all my strength, so that all the six inches nail will go into the tree. By so doing, I've taken control over the mind of the lady. That's why sometimes you see beautiful women following people they shouldn't have followed. Because they have taken dominion over their lives. So if you are here, please listen to me. That's what I'm saying. The devil is a wicked man. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. Destroy lives. That's what I was doing. And I thought I had arrived. God had power. And then I tried on another lady. I said, We have many ways of doing that. Sometimes you fetch uh, water in the grass and then invite the spirit of whoever you want to charm into the grass. And then we speak to her to, 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 to obey our instructions. And while we were doing it, the grass got broken and the water spilled off. I did the second time, it got broken. The water spilled off. And meanwhile, I've been warned in the season seven book of Moses that if we do such things first, second, and it gets broken, don't try the third because the water will come over your eyes and you will go blind. So I didn't want to go blind, but I had to tell this uh, man something. So I told the man that, look, this woman you are chasing is a witch. Forget about her. <laughs> it was later. You see, if you are sitting here, let me tell you, let me give you an information. There are two powers 
in this world, the power of the Lord Almighty and the power of Satan, Lucifer. Anybody who says that the devil has no power is going to compromise with the truth. The devil has power, I'm telling you. So, you either you go for God's power, which is superior, or you go for the devil's power, which is inferior. So the devil can work. The devil can manipulate people. But he cannot manipulate everybody. I'll tell you the people that he cannot manipulate. So if you are here and you don't know this man, we are talking, are talking about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You see, this meeting is all about the one person, Jesus. He died over 2,022 years ago. And still, we are mentioning his name. A lot of great people are dead. Two weeks, one month, one year, forgotten about them. This man, we cannot forget about them. And he, the name that he has given unto us is a mighty name. He said, when you mention, every knee has to bow and every tongue has to confess that he is Lord. Even if you meet a lion, mention this name, Jesus. The lion cannot have power over you because it's a powerful name. And that is what I'm a call man. When we do business, in business we don't share secrets. Because if you share secrets, somebody can outwit you. And so if, if you bought the things from uh, Accra, and someone asks you, so I bought it from Takrati. So you don't want the person to know where you bought those things from. But what I'm telling you, if it were to be a cold business, I wouldn't have shared it for you. I would have kept it. <laughs> so later on, I realized that the lady I was trying to charm was a born again Christian, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, living a holy and righteous life. So it was impossible for me to use uh, inferior power to, 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 to manipulate her. And so, <laughs> but when we read Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17, the Bible says, No weapon that the fashion against you will ever prosper. And you shall confuse every tongue that rests against you in judgment. He says, This is the heritage of the children of the Lord, for their righteousness is of me. So if we are a child of God, you are covered by the blood of Jesus. But if you are not a child of God, you are not covered. That's why it didn't work. Sorry, sometimes you charm bank managers, people who have gone to school, doctors, engineers, who don't have to know the right thing. We charm them so they do things outside their scope of work. And sometimes they're dismissed. Very bad. And I've asked God to forgive me. But all that I'm telling you, these powers are still working today. Yeah. So if you don't have Jesus, that's why somebody said, I'm going to curse you. And people die. But you can't curse me because I'm covered. What is in me? It's greater than what is in the world. It's impossible. So if you want power, I'm inviting you. The man who has power over every power is called Jesus. When you have him, you, you, uh, Jesus is in Jesus is in you. You go to Jesus, Jesus is to God. So it is very difficult for somebody to come for you because you have to go to God, dissect him, get Jesus, dissect him before you can get me. It is impossible. So why are you wasting time following a uh, 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 power that has no power at all? So that's what I was doing. And then a group came to my school. Young people. And they were singing songs. And some of the songs, they, they sang with signs. And, and they were pointing their hands like they were singing. And when I was sitting, the hand was coming there. So I knew they were addressing me, but I didn't know what to do. So I was uncomfortable until they said, if you are here and you are not sure of your salvation, come forward and accept Jesus Christ and your life will change. I was the first person who went forward. And I gave my life to Christ. Listen. Sorry, I want to teach you what my father told me. My father was a complete illiterate. He has no classmate. He's never gone to school before. He told me this. And when I became the 14th of my, uh, 12th of my father's 14th children, he married one woman. Had two children with that woman. The woman divorced my father. He married another woman. Had two, two, two children with that new woman. That woman also divorced my father. So, you get the story. And he married my mother and had two children with my mother. So my father knew that my mother too would divorce him. And so he wouldn't wait for my mother to divorce him. But he would commit suicide by hanging himself. So my mother was a Christian born again. He was in the farm. When the host spoke to her, stop whatever you're doing and go home quickly. My father was doing something. 
she didn't know. So she rushed home. And while she opened the main door to the hall, those days, we don't see uh, buildings like this. You can see the scanters there. So my father has put the table, the chair, and the rope, and was just about to draw the rope to hang himself. Why? Because two women had already divorced him, and the third one was going to divorce him. It was almost useless. And my, father, my mother pushed my father from the table. Why do you want to do this? He said, God doesn't love me. If he loves me, he won't allow two women to divorce me and you also to divorce me. That's why I want to take my life. And my mother said, look, that would be the worst the, uh, decision you can ever take. Give your life to this man they call Jesus. I have not decided to divorce you. Let's go to church. And he took my father to church. They preached to him. They, he accepted Christ as personal savior. And they prayed for him. He went to what we call deliverance from the enemy. Same time. You know why the women were divorced my father? One, he had three qualifications that women don't like. The first qualification, illiterate, 100%. <laughs> Two, he was poor. He has no money. Cashless. <laughs> three, he was suffering from a disgraceful disease called epilepsy. You see, oh, you know, see, they see my father outside, nice. They go home, they identify this three, then the next thing is divorce. I don't know the, the, the moment that you're going through, I don't know the situation that you find yourself. The solution is come and meet this man we are talking about. His name is Jesus. When you meet him, he transforms your life. He gives you hope. He gives you joy. You see, joy, uh, joy is not uh, a commodity that you can go to a supermarket and buy. It's a free gift. When you get Jesus, you get joy, you have peace. Peace doesn't come from power. It doesn't come from money. It doesn't come from wealth. It comes from knowledge about Christ Jesus. So, they pray for my father. My father had a dream. Most of us have dreams. And my father had a dream. The dream that he saw, he said, he told me, he saw Jesus. And Jesus was telling me, you say, I don't love you. You don't serve me. Would you serve me? He said, yes. Then he said, bring your head. This is not story. This is true something that my father told me. That's something that happened. My mother testified to that. He said, bring your head towards me. And he did something like this. He said, Jesus got hold of his head and removed a live snake from my father's head. Snake, life. So he put it down there. The snake was running away. He said, Command the snake to die in Jesus' name. He said, the snake died in the name of Jesus. The snake died in the dream. He said, the snake is the cause of your epilepsy and your poverty. And somebody is behind this thing. I've warned the person several times. He has turned deaf ears to my warnings. And so my judgment has come upon that person. And I'll show you what will happen to her. He said, put the snake into a fire that he has prepared. Immediately the snake went to the fire. The skin turned reddish. They said, the person who is responsible for all your troubles, Anna, his skin will turn like this snake. And that is what you use to identify that person. From today, the epilepsy is gone. From today, you say you are poor, I'll give you money. Again, you say you are illiterate, I'll give you a job which is made by architects. My father quickly didn't pronounce architect. He said, I chatted, I chatted. So my father told me that. Three days, God says, I'll give it to you. He woke up from the dream. Say, hey, so he called my mother and said, Look, I've met Jesus. He has come to heal me. Tomorrow I'm not going to church again. He said, No, 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 no. When they call sick people, when they call sick people, then you don't have to go for it. You have been delivered. But you still have to serve the Lord so that the fire in you will not go cold. So, 14 days after the dream, my father was sitting in his hall. He told me all these things in tears. And I was listening. He said, that is why I wanted you people to go to church. But you didn't understand me. He was in tears telling me this. Uh, there was a knock at the door. I said, yes, who is it coming? And her own niece, from head to toe, reddish. So when my father saw her, he remembered the dream. This is the sign. So my father was a little bit scared. So he was going backwards. And then she came straight knelt before my father and said, please forgive me. 
And I said, what have you done that you need my forgiveness? He said, I'm responsible for all your troubles. I gave you the epilepsy and took your money. But why did you do that? I took my girlfriend, my, my, my boyfriend to your room. And when you were knocking and you would not open it, you saw the door opened. And my boyfriend was running away. He hit you, you fell. And you were angry with me. You scraped me naked and gave me 24 lashes. That day, I decided to come and return it. I was having evil spirits in me. And when I came to return it, you had no protection. The point is, when the devil, the enemy, comes to destroy and don't have protection, he's able to go ahead. But what about if you have protection? That is why we have security people. God, but I, I, can, I can show you. With all the security around American president, he was still killed. If you want good security, a security that you can rely on is Jesus. Because he does not sleep. He does not slumber. He knows everything before it even happens. He said, when you were a clot of blood in your mother's womb, he knew you. So my father said, what do you want me to do? He says, pray for me. My father is a Christian for 40 days. He doesn't know how to pray. So he stood up and said, God, thank you. Your will be done. Amen. Finish. So the lady went off. Two hours. Wait, 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 wait. The lady was gone. My father took four of this woman's children and took care of them. Some are architects, some are engineers, some are architects. So if somebody has done something against you, you are against that person, against the children, that's not God's way. From today, change your attitude. And that's what you will see the blessings of the Lord. And somebody who was poor, a woman going out of her, his life, became a building contractor. Not only building contractor, the best building contractor in the Eastern region. Yeah. All the secondary schools that I go, my father built it. I was there. I was there. If you want to work for government, if you want to cast concrete, after you have put all the steel there, you can't cast it. You have to allow the engineers to come and inspect before you get to go ahead to cast. So my father was going around, the elite father was going around, and he told the engineer that this place is wrong, so please change it. The engineer said, knew that my father can't speak English. The engineer said, oh my, look at all this. If it had not been things that had gone this way, how can we regret it? And for an ordinary person like this, my boss, seeing that I have made a mistake. So he said, oh my, everything is fine. So I told my boss, the engineer says everything is fine, so let's wait for the engineers. Then the engineers came from Govodia, and the spot my father was complaining about, they stopped there. They said, remove all these things. You have to redo them again. My father said, oh, you are, there you are. <laughs> That's how I got to know that God is almighty, and nothing is impossible with you. So it doesn't matter your situation, whether you went to school or not. The fact is, if you have the opportunity to go to school, but if you don't have the opportunity now, still, God can come into your life and transform you and make you what you do. So these young guys who led me to Christ, I followed them for them to give me teachings. I completed secondary school, a very mushroom one. My school is mushroom, mushroom school at the time because English. They were using to teach us English. <laughs> English. At secondary school, if you want to write an essay, 50 lines, I have to space, space the words so that I can get the 50 lines. <laughs> and here I am. When I completed school, my father said, come and work with me. After all, if you want to go to university, look, this man is an engineer. He's working under me. And this man is architect. And he said, me, I'm uneducated. So by the time your classmates come from university, you are the top. So come and work with me. A young man who just seeing money. You see, money and education doesn't go well. That's why I didn't allow my children to come to my workplace. I want them to finish their school before you hand over everything to them. So I started working. Young man, four bedroom house, I was given, my father gave it to me. I married that wonderful woman sitting down there. And all my six children are with her. And when I die, nobody is come to claim that I had a baby somewhere. <laughs> that's my sister. Brethren, now listen to this 
portion. What I'm about to tell you, my pastor, head pastor, told me that Nana, God has blessed you. Please take, delete this part of your story or your testimony because it's not nice. So I asked, who made me what you think I am? That I should stop honoring him with my testimony. I will continue to do it. And anybody who says that understand. Well, it's me. What did I do? When we married, I married at the age of 24, very young. My wife was 22 at the time. So that lady sitting down there, 62 and three years. And we had money. I bought BMW, I bought Mercedes Benz, I bought New Plan, 24 years. My father, illiterate. So he couldn't have given me that money. I worked hard. God blessed me because I gave my life to Christ. And things were moving faster. I was the first young man to introduce color television into the couple. So I thought I had arrived. And I was not there. So men, please listen to me. I don't feel good when I'm sharing, taking Christ out. But I'm sharing it so that you will not go through the tangent that I went through. Because it's painful, it costs. And if you are not careful, you will end your life. I don't want you to die before your time. What did I do? We had money. So my wife had the first baby, boy. So we said, okay, let's employ the services of the maid who will help us in the house. The maid came, about 20 years old lady. When I was married, I married as a Christian the correct way. No, no kissing, kissing, touching the bread, the bottle, nothing happened. We married well. And now what has happened? A maid who was living with us in the morning, when she's performing her duties in the house, she would put on uh, a transparent night tea. And then, very sad. And I was looking at the breast, looking at the bottles. And as it goes around, my eyes go around it. <laughs> Listen, whatever you focus your eyes on will determine what you become tomorrow. What do you focus your eyes on? Those of you who are watching pornography, you are opening yourself to the devil. To cut long story short, one day, what you are thinking in your mind happened. <laughs> and then, I felt guilty because I was a Christian. I knew that it was wrong for me to do that. I'm not saying the maid is not a woman being. It's a woman being, but the point is, what has that maid, that my wife, does not have? So men, listen. Every sin is sin. But sin which involves sex is different because it is the only sin when you commit, you commit against your own body. If you steal, you steal somebody's money. If you kill, you kill somebody. If you lie, it's against somebody. But when you fornicate or you cause adultery, you do it against your body. And that is the only thing that can take you back fast. And you know, Bible was a man in my He had seven demons. And he was a harlot. So if you sleep with such a woman, all the seven demons have sex with you. That's why there are a lot of men who are going to difficult and today I am here not because I want to be here. We thank our king for permitting us to come here. He invited us. And it is an opportunity that he is giving unto you so that you can be delivered. That's why those who are delivered from the enemy give thanks unto him for he is good. I don't know what about. My father, epilepsy. He made Jesus. He left. So if I suffer from epilepsy, blindness, whatever, poverty is sickness too. God has power. First, to deliver you and to write your name to the book of life. So my brethren, when you sin, the devil has access to your life. And then you close the door between you and God. That's why I say my ears are not locked, my hands are shut because of your sins. Sin is filthy. Sin is reproach. Sin separates you from God. Sin makes you miserable. Sin takes away your 
your, your confidence. And that's what I did. So one day, I realized that my business was going down. I was going to abroad every month. My business was going down. Meanwhile, we were studying. They were buying. I saw the view. A huge woman sitting in front of my shop. When we said, she takes the money. So the business collapsed. So some of your business are collapsing because you have allowed the devil you today. You will open the, the door out for you to go. Accept Jesus Christ into your life. And your life will never be the same. So I saw the BMW. I saw the Benz that I, 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 I bought. The house that I built at the age of 24, I sold it. When I was selling it, I'm a building contractor. So if I say a beautiful house, I know what the beautiful house is. No individual could buy it. Because it was expensive. Bank bought it and paid 100%. I said, oh, I will start again. I started. The business could out. I wanted to come to Accra. I came to Accra with money to do for a shop. I was duped. I went back, gathered another money. I came to do for a shop. Someone told me, show me a beautiful shop. We agreed upon uh, an amount. I paid. The next time, I went there to hear. That person, this is our shop. We are not ready to give it out. So who took your money? I will do the second time. Because the cause of my troubles have not been identified. So one day, I came to my senses, started praying, and God said, tell your wife what you did. Hey, my wife will know that I'm an angel. How am I going to tell her that not any other woman that they made living with us? So I get it, courage. One night, we were going for an all night to pray. And she was leading a portion called confession. <laughs> and I saw, I saw that she has written some points. She has written some forgive others as you want others to forgive. <laughs> so I picked that portion. And I asked her, I asked her, what do you mean by this? She said, God says if you don't forgive, God can also not forgive you. Amen. I've said again, God and against you. He said, what, what kind of sin? She didn't believe it. I broke the story. We are living in a story building. Everybody knows that I love my wife. I feel it. My wife crying. And people were here. So I quickly went for tape recorder, put in a short in a cassette, there was this cassette, and opened the road and feel that it can overshadow. <laughs> and I found myself also crying. That day, both of us, we wept. I realized that I've disappointed God. I've sinned and I've allowed the devil to destroy my life. He held my hands, prayed with me, promised me of her forgiveness. And that is how the transformation started. I've told you this because Romans chapter 1 verse 16 says that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. And I'm telling you because I don't want you to do the same thing. And if you don't, today, if you don't give your life to Christ, if you don't stop these things, God will remind you that this particular day, that tall man gave you an opportunity. So, God, I prayed to God. And God told me that he will restore the things that the Catholic has eaten. The canker will have destroyed. We have stopped eating balanced diet. We are eating blueberry three times a day. Because poverty has entered the house. And when I go to the other station for a car, they ask me, Nana, where is your Benz? I told them, it, it is in Briscoe. It is with Briscoe. That, that Briscoe was agent. I was lying. I've sold it. The mission, I've sold it. Everything. Three attempts. I wanted to take my life. Why? Because of poverty. I heard voices. Those of you who hear voices today, we're going to stop those voices. It doesn't come from court. I hear voices. Go to your bedroom. Instructive. I went there. Look under your bed. I looked at the bed is there. My pistol. Take it. Load it. Bullets. Eight rounds. Point it here. I did. Say, so press the trigger. Now as I was about to press the trigger, I heard another voice. Clear. If you die like this, you will end up in hell. I stopped. I turned. And there was nobody there. So I was shaking. I stopped. We were living in a solid building. The devil said, oh, you have to, you still have to die, but in a nice way. <laughs> How? He said, go to the top. He got 
the, uh, the, uh, the reception was bad too. Everybody had a long bamboo with the TV pool. Go there and as you are turning the pool, go headlong from the three story building. And when you die, the people will say that you have an accident. The voice came again when I went to talk there. You can deceive men. You can't deceive me. You can still go to hell. Hey. And then someone was owing us. The person came to pay. We could bought another BMW. The devil said, take the BMW. Go to Soto from Coco. I didn't know what I was going to do in Soto, but I was going. And then I was over speeding from Winneba to Redu to Soto. The road is like this. I was speeding, over speeding, 120 kilometers per hour. I was looking for a tree so I can crash the car and die. The fact was, I wanted to die, but I didn't want the name of the Lord to be tarnished. And then the Lord came again. So me, for me to be here, it's grace. Three, I was given three opportunities to live. Come to Jesus. If you come to Jesus, you will hear these voices. The devil wants to steal. The devil wants to destroy and kill you. But when you come to Jesus, you will be saved. Now, because of time, let me run off. I went to a emergency director who was my friend. One, he said, I don't remember. So she has written the director. He promised me to give me a big loan. I've sold all my properties. So I said, well, I don't have properties. So, so what? I'm the managing director. And then I said in my spirit, it didn't come from my mouth. I said, hey, if I have not met this man, I would have been finished. And then I heard the word, if I have not met this man, who is this man? I said, ah, he is the one who can give me a loan without security. I didn't hear anything again. He gave me two weeks. I told my wife, in two weeks, life will start again. Two weeks, I came to Accra. I'm looking for the managing director. Then the lady asked me, which of the men did that? And how many men did that do you have? I said, of course, I'm looking for it. my pepper. She said, my pepper has been dismissed. Jesus, the person who has promised to help me has been dismissed. Bible says, the arm of faith will fail. If you put your trust your, 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 in anything, it will fail. So I got an opportunity to go to abroad to send a friend's wife. They have married for five years. The lady is living in Ghana. The man is in the UK. They want to have babies. How can they have babies when they live apart? I had multiple visa, so I could guarantee anybody to go. So I did it. My wife says that, go with her. She says, oh, men, please, men who are here, listen. Some of you don't respect your wife because you say, oh, they are half a woman, half a woman. God says, he brought them into your life to help you, help mate. My wife told me things that was not logic. And I didn't want to do that. Go with her. The woman said, ah, for what? We don't have money. The little money that we have, my wife said to buy a ticket and go with her. Her concern is if the lady doesn't come, they will cancel my multiple visa. So that you go and make sure that she come back after she has become pregnant. I accepted it and I went. And we went to Fugo School. After the last meeting that we had in Ambassador Hotel, Mr. Darko was leading the offering. When the offering is being given, I look at people and say, because they don't know. Some of us have to lock up our blessings because we don't understand the word, uh, offering. I don't blame them because some charlatans have deceived them with offering. So they say they don't want to offer. Mm. So that person, whoever want to put God to test, pay 100,000. That time, 100,000 was a big money. And I had only 100,000 in my bank because I had bought a ticket to the UK. I raised up my hands. My wife said, ah, and we offered. We went to UK to cut long story short. A man who had been looking for me he said, Anana, why? Why are you that you don't come here? I couldn't tell him that I was broke. He said, Oh Nana, I wanted to build a house for me. How many houses? He said, Two. Can you give me quotation? He gave me the drawings. I did the quantities, I charged him 45,000 pounds. I knew the Indians, they would definitely ask for this house. So I could have taken 40,000. But I said, Let me save 45. So that if he asked for this kind of come, come back and it to come to take uh, 40,000. The man went to the lady, didn't ask for this count, and he brought me a check for 45,000 pounds for two houses. I'm sorry. Hey, okay, two. Where? He says one Accra, one in Patressa. When do you want you to start? I can build a house in one month, 30 days. And the man said, I want those houses in two years' time, Nana, two years' time. Two years time, what does it mean? God referred me to the bank manager. You were going for loan, and that loan is one year. 
You pay interest. You pay time to manager. You pay commitment to You pay all these things. things, 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 things. I'm giving you a loan without all these things. Somebody was going to wait for two weeks for somebody to get pregnant. I put it came home and started. That is how the Lord was called. All that the devil is taking. Now, what am I saying? Life without Jesus is empty. Life without Jesus is difficult. Life without Jesus is troubles, chaos, disaster. Come to Jesus Christ. All that you have to do is to acknowledge him as your personal savior and confess with your mouth that he is Lord. That's all. I did it. Two God's people here have done it. The Lord has changed our lives. And this same God is going to change. Let me sing one song. Then I'll sit down. The song goes like this. Have you ever thought that life may be over soon? Have you ever thought that life may be over soon? Have you ever tried to settle where you spend your eternity? Oh, have you ever thought, have you ever thought that life may be over soon? Today, as you are living, settle everything with Jesus. Today, as you are living, try to settle everything with Jesus. For tomorrow might be too late. Why not make it just today?
Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I know also that I can't save myself because I'm a sinner. Today, Jesus, accept me as your as a personal savior. I accept you as my personal savior. So long as I live on this earth, I will serve you. God, forgive me all my sins. If there's any written code against my life, I can't save it. The name of Jesus. Lord, accept me. Help me. Bless me. Elevate me. From now, almost. Amen. Please, I don't need to have this.